So why it's uh, important to learn because uh, most of the times in an injured elbow, it's a swollen elbow, anatomical landmarks are changed and then you won't get compliance to examine because of the pain and tenderness and mostly the elbow is cartilaginous. So difficult to read such an x-ray and when in a trauma setting, the views which we take is just haphazard. Whatever is comfortable for the child, we take it. So it may be inadequate also. So before I talk about radiology, again, I'll stress that uh, you should have a good physical examination and come to a clinical diagnosis and then proceed for the necessary x-rays. So we all know about the ossification centers, the capitulum appears first and then the radial head and then the medial epicondyle, the trochlea, olecranon and lastly the uh, lateral epicondyle. So that's the sequence which is always almost followed. So we must match that age with this ossification sequence. Always take both the views so that we don't misinterpret what's happening. So minimum two orthogonal views is a must. That's a orthopedic rule. And then how to position the x-rays for a true AP view. So that's the, for an elbow, full uh, extension of elbow with uh, full supination of the forearm is the position which we want. But in a trauma scenario where there is swelling, the child may not be able to extend. So if you are looking at the distal humerus, the last image is the one which we will be taking. That is humerus parallel to the, or flat to the, uh, the slide there down. And uh, that's the way to take uh, true AP. And about the lateral view, the true lateral view would consist of a uh, view where the shoulder, wrist and elbow are at almost at the same level. The elbow is at 90 degree flexion and forearm fully supinated. So that's there in the last position. And with that cotton felt, I have made all the elbow, shoulder and wrist at the same level. When we want special views like internal oblique views, uh, we need to pronate the forearm and internal rotate about 20 degrees. Uh, when we are looking at a lateral condyle fracture, same will apply for the medial side also, external rotation. And sometimes uh, just uh, a part of x-ray, like elbow x-ray won't be enough. You want full length of the forearm. What is obvious here is a radio capital dissociation, but if we take the elbow x-ray, probably we might miss on what's happening to the ulna. So always look for full length so that we check the ulnar bow as well. And uh, very special situation, we may need other view which is called as a radio capitular view. And uh, this is an example of that. If you see the radial head uh, of this child, it's slightly posterior sublux. So how do we know it, whether it's an eccentric ossification or what's happening? So in an x-ray we took and uh, sorry, we took an MRI and then we noted that there was a radial head fracture because of that it has posterior sublux. Premal sir will talk about these lesions, trash lesions further. So that view may throw a more better light on such things. So stress views are generally not done in an OPD setting, but uh, like morning we did a lateral condyle. So you can stress and look for instability when in theater and the child is sedated. So this is a medial epicondyl fracture. Again, we were evaluating other injury, but we took the chance and did the stressing and we can see it's mobile, but the treatment still remains same probably in this case. And uh, this is an example of taking the normal x-ray, the same case which I showed, the radio capitular line cutting behind and this is cutting in the uh, right, uh, the normal elbow is cutting directly in the center. So initially we look for soft tissue shadows, where is the swelling, medial side, lateral side, anterior, posterior and we look for something we call as a fat pad sign or sail sign. So you can see the shadows in the lateral view, so that's the sail sign both anterior and posterior are there. And we have to look for bony alignment. Is there a good cortical continuity? Is the bone angle normal? That's around 72 plus or minus five. And uh, how is the shaft condylar angle, which is around 40? And then anterior humeral line, which should cut directly in the center third of the uh, capitulum. Look for the teardrop, whether it's nicely formed or you can see any change and then look for the radio capitular line. Also look for something which we call as a coronoid line, which is similar to the Shenton line in hip. So it's continuous with the proximal, the volar uh, coronoid and it's continuous with the anterior humeral line. It's a smooth line. So if you see any change, probably there is 
dislocation or uh, something else going on in the elbow. This is the radiocapitular line and the ulnar bow, which uh, Mubarak has described. So that should be touching dorsally from distal to proximal. And s rare scenarios where there is no ossification center, we look for these two lines, medial humeral line and lateral humeral line. And when we draw a proximal ulna axis, so the proximal ulna axis should lie between these two lines. Uh, otherwise, the elbow is in cubitus varus. So this is a posterior medial physal separation that is post reduction. We can see the line there. Uh, normal variations we should be aware that trochlea can ossify with multiple centers and do not confuse it with uh, uh, medial epicondyle or something. And there is eccentric ossification on the MRI if you see the capitulum, the anterior part is ossified and the uh, anterior and medial part. So if you see an X-ray of a younger child, elbow less than four or so, you can find that anterior humeral line may not actually right, uh, cut through the middle of the capitulum. So these are normal variations. So few case scenarios I'll talk quickly. So this is a case of distal humerus physial separation. So we see that medial and lateral humeral line have moved and uh, we need better views uh, to see the lateral. And then same child, six days old, presented with the MRI already done and we can see the cubitus virus this at the end of the two weeks. And that's the physial separation. We don't routinely do MRI. The child had already an MRI when they came to us. So this can be confused sometimes with a lateral condyle fracture as well if given only one view. So it's actually a posterior medial uh, or physial separation. You can see that line, medial humeral and lateral humeral lines. When in doubt, always orthogram helps to differentiate between these two. Supracondylar one view is not enough. In lateral you may see many things which can change the management, conservative or surgical. That's the anterior humeral line cutting. Lateral uh, condyle fractures, you need an internal oblique view. And this is an incarcerated uh, medial epicondyle fracture into the joint, which was thought of dislocation and uh, reduced. But after four weeks, he came with this x-ray. And this is a fallen outstretched hand. You can see the radial head is lying 180 degrees upside down, almost outside the joint. In the x-ray, there is a faint thing uh, overlapping the olecranon process. And in the AP view, it's just behind the capitulum that's shown in MRI. So message is suspect clinically. Remember the ossification sequence. Uh, uh, take care or read the soft tissue shadows. Know the bony alignment and normal variations. And thank you so much for listening. Discussion. Don't fall for the seemingly beautiful things. They may be really harmful also. So here, are, here is Dr. Premal Naik to enlighten on that. Sir, please. Thank you, sir. Uh, we are going to, this is going to be an extension of the previous talk. And it's very important that sometimes only the x-rays are not important. So this nine-year-old female fell at school, had injured this hand. And this is how the x-ray was. Uh, can anybody find out any fracture in this? So sometimes fractures may not be very visible, but if you look at it, there is a significant soft tissue swelling. She came to me about a month later and this is how the x-ray was. Any, mo any fracture at this point of time? But the moment you take an opposite x-ray, you will find out that there is some fracture. Now you are looking at a radial head fracture. Then MRI was done, that confirmed the fracture. We thought we'll treat it surgically, but then I decided to give a conservative uh, treatment trial and uh, everything healed within few months and uh, she gained good uh, movement. And that is why when the first x-ray is normal and your clinical signs tell you that there is a significant injury, these lesions are known as trash lesions. Trash is a acronym for trivial radiological appearance seeming harmless. It's a very twisted term. What basically tells you that sometimes the injury is so subtle that you need something more rather than an x-ray. And this is the list of injuries which were described by Dr. Peter Waters in his, his paper in JPON in 2010. For most of these injuries are fairly common, but sometimes when they're subtle, we tend to miss it. So let's go to a case similar to Dr. Vidya Sagar, which was showed. This child was 20 months old and treated as an elbow dislocation. 
with this type of post reduction films when the child came to me there was a cuvitus varus in addition to that there was restriction of movement and at 2 years it was very obvious because you don't see medial condyle at 2 years when you start seeing medial condyle at 2 years you know that there is something wrong with the distal end of humerus where it was an avascular necrosis this is how there was a significant deformity the deformity was corrected and post deformity he again has started going back and he is going to need some more surgery is coming down the line just by not knowing what injury is there if that point of time if the surgeon had done either a sonography arthrogram or an mri as shown by dr vidya sagar we would not have landed here for sure so how can we get away this is a similar looking x ray 9 month old female presented with elbow pain she probably had similar injury at very young age so probably a case of uh, ni not the accidental injury how can you treat them properly because when when you, you don't have mri on table so how do you define your distal fragment as beautifully shown today morning what we can do is you can add some dye here once you add the dye your distal fragment is very well delineated with the good delineation of the distal fragment you can treat this as a supracondylar fracture you can reduce it in ap and lateral and then you can start pinning you can add some more dye and see finally that you have restored the anterior humeral line this 10 year old came to me with severe pain obviously uh, not much bad looking x rays but the moment you take uh, opposite x ray you will realize that one piece which is there on the outer side on the right side is in the inner side on the left x ray and when you open up uh, and you find that the medial condyle along with the entire flexor origin is within the joint what you just need to do is to bring it out <coughs> and then put a screw there and this is the long term follow up of the same child <coughs> this is an interesting case uh, one of my teacher had treated this and it is clearly written displaced fracture medial epicondyle left elbow this child uh, was lost to follow up because of the covid in between and presented to me very recently with flexion deformity this is how the x ray looked like on presentation and if you look at this there was a new bone formation anteriorly these are the comparative views which tell you how is the ossification developing and where is the fracture this was a basically a missed medial condyle fracture which was treated as a as an epicondyle surgically this is how the ct scan looked and this is how the child had restriction of movement and significant pain so this is what the surgery was done and this is how this is early follow up and he is improving in his movement and has a good bony union but fish tail deformity was inevitable because initially the fracture was missed again a second case uh, this child presented very recently and the, the this x ray uh, and this ct scan was done the report of this ct scan was uh, lateral condyle fracture and proximal ulna fracture so when the child came to me and when i took the x ray it was not very clear i tried taking internal oblique views but that was not very obvious and when we did an mri we found that this was a coronoid fracture coronoid fracture is exceedingly rare this is my first and last case i have seen in in child these are his her more views and this is the dynamic c uh, this is a sequence of ct scan on your right and mri on the left showing that the only thing i did was i put him in a plaster this are the different views as shown by dr vidya sagar that if you take oblique views you will be able to see it better but in opd to know and take an oblique view is not that easy this child had a stable coronoid he could move elbow very well so we just immobilized him uh, in plaster and he has go move on con to have a good elbow range of movement so basically what is trash it's a fancy name given to injury which looks simple on x ray than what it is so what you need to do you need to have a clinical exam as you have been already told in previous lecture and you need to have a high index of suspicion you need right investigation which can be just a simple opposite elbow x ray you don't need mri you don't need ultrasound in several time this injury is may not always need surgery it can be treated conservatively what it needs sometimes is a very rare injury like a posterior subluxation with a radial head fracture which requires a expert's touch and that is what you need to learn about uh, trash lesions thank you very much